When crazy things are found in cluttered homes or bustling cities or just anywhere that's busy, it's crazy, but it's to be expected to a certain degree. But when odd things turn up in the middle of nowhere, now that's just bananas. How did that odd stuff get there? These are surprising things found in the middle of nowhere. Number 15. There's a giant hand in Chile's Atacama Desert. Has anyone seen the film 2001 A Space Odyssey? While well, the first entry on our list certainly seems to draw some inspiration from the monolith in the film. Standing at a massive 36 feet tall, this hand-shaped sculpture in the middle of the Atacama Desert can be seen from miles before you even reach it. And its name? La Mano del Deserto, or The Hand of the Desert. I'm sure I mangled that pronunciation. More than 25 years ago, a small mining town in the middle of the Atacama Desert called Antofagasta propositioned an artist to create a monument and homage to the surrounding salty, empty desert. In 1992, he would finally unveil this hand outstretched from the sands of the desert. Made out of solid concrete, molded around an iron wire frame, the sculpture stands even taller than a football post. The desert itself may be flat, but it's quite a treacherous one. Because of its high salt content, it's considered the driest non-polar desert on Earth. I wouldn't want to be stranded out there. So it's advised for travelers to have a full tank of gas and plenty of water. Another note, don't drive too fast. The emptiness can be quite mesmerizing, and it's very easy to lose control of the car out there. So be careful if you ever do it. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This photo right here is a glimpse at what people called the Pegasus wreckage. If you're unfamiliar, the Pegasus was a C-121 Lockheed Constellation airplane that, around about 40 years ago, serviced the Christchurch to Antarctica route on behalf of the Navy. Planes that are headed to McMurdo are often more than not carrying almost no excess fuel, so at some point they effectively reach a point of no return. If they don't turn back, they have no choice but to complete the journey. And that's what happened to the Pegasus on October 8th of 1970. The Pegasus got caught up in a storm after passing the point of no return, so had no choice but to crash land. The plane was never yanked free, and to this day, is still there sunken in the snow. Slap bang in the middle of nowhere. That hasn't stopped people who have stumbled upon it from slapping it with graffiti though. Comment down below with the hashtag sweet topic in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Mysterious Lake Appears in the Desert Overnight Imagine this, you're Tunisian, the year is 2014, and there's a major drought. Everyone you know is suffering from the heat, and you just can't take it anymore. Then one day a friend of yours tells you that an enormous lake, 1 million cubic meters over more than 1 hectare in size, seems to have just appeared out of nowhere in the middle of the desert, and your prayers have been answered. This was the literal case in Tunisia. A body of water quickly drew many overheated people looking to find some relief from all of the sweltering 40 degrees Celsius weather, and it became known as Lac de Gafsa, or just Gafsa for short. The fact was that there was a drought when the lake appeared, and it made this occurrence all the more head-scratching. After a short time, the water would go from a crystal clear blue to a greenish color. Scientists did warn that the water could be carcinogenic, but it was much too hot for people to even care. While there's been no official explanation for the lake's appearance, scientists believe that there was a seismic shift under the spot, which caused the water to be forced up from under the ground. Talk about getting lucky! These people most definitely had someone, or something, looking out for them. Number 13. Wa Anamos, Oasis of Mosquitoes 
Our next entry is also located in one of the most remote locations of the world, in the geographic center of the Sahara Desert. Wa Anamos is an extinct volcano crater, a whopping 4 kilometers wide, and has a field of ash surrounding it for 10 to 20 kilometers. What a sight it must be! Except for one little fact, the surrounding bodies of water are infested with mosquitoes. This fact obviously gives the location its name, Oasis for Mosquitoes, or from another translation, the Crater of Mosquitoes. Now I'm more partial to the second one because it sounds like a cool metal album name, Crater of the Mosquitoes. Anyways, all of these lakes and small bodies of water form around a small black cone at the center of it all that spews out ash. This helps to keep the area fertile and supports the life surrounding it. People who do come visit are allowed to camp in the surrounding areas, and it's highly advised to bring mosquito repellent and some bug nets. Otherwise, it would be the most itchy adventure of all time. The Sahara is actually littered with little spots like this here and there, though the water itself isn't very potable due to its high salt content. This particular oasis has served as a watering hole for centuries, allowing weary travelers to rest and get some fresh water during their long treks across the desert. Number 12. Kotsky Pillar Monastery Now I'm not gonna lie, I do get a bad case of vertigo. So the next surprising thing is definitely not going to find a spot on my list of crazy cool things to visit. But why? Well that's because the Kotsky Pillar Monastery is 130 feet or 40 meters off the ground. So obviously that's going to be a hard no for me. Situated on top of a naturally occurring limestone monolith, the monastery is only accessible by a thin iron ladder that's bolted to the side of the stone. Not only that, but the monks who are going there for their daily prayer use this climb as a moment of reflection and a way to get even closer to God. The climb can take up to an entire 20 minutes. The monastery is located roughly 200 kilometers, or about 125 miles, west of Georgia's capital city. It's also very difficult to get to, because the public transport doesn't go out that far. The only way to really get there is by bus or car, but from what I've studied, it's very much worth the adventure. It's also considered one of the world's most isolated and sacred churches. So for all of you who love God and climbing up to dizzying heights, this one's for you. Number 11. The Atlantic Ocean Structure Howl's Moving Castle, anyone? Well, how about France's Floating Castle? It doesn't really float though, but when you spot the castle from a distance, you sure will think so. This is the Fort Boyard, which was originally designed to be a defensive castle made to protect the shores of Charente and the harbor of Rochefort. Even though construction began in 1662, it wouldn't take long for the original architects to see that this project was going to be too costly and time-consuming to finish, so the building was stopped thereafter. It would remain incomplete for over a century and a half as the French-English War would wage around it. Finally, in 1802, Napoleon saw how incredibly useful this fort could be from a tactical standpoint and began finishing it. After centuries of sitting sad and vacant, Fort Boyard was finally completed in 1858. The final oval measurement of the imposing structure comes in at about 330 feet by 160 feet, comprised of sleeping quarters on the ground floor, and in the upper levels, they're used for storing cannons and ammunition. It would be really cool to spend a weekend there, waking up, surrounded by the sea. I really need a vacation. Number 10. Richard III Found now you would think that if you were the king of England, you'd be buried in some super epic tomb or even an awesome castle, but the ancient Egyptians definitely nailed that. This sure is not the case for King Richard III though, who was found buried in a very unlikely place, under a car park in Leicester. The poor guy from King of England to a hole in the ground under a bunch of cars. After running some tests on the remains, scientists would confirm that the DNA matched that of his descendants. And after these rigorous tests and further academic studies, the bones have indeed been carbon dated to being between 1455 and 1540. 
Also, the bones belong to a man being in either his late 20s or mid 30s. Being that King Richard III died in battle in the year 1485 and he was 32 years old, most people agree that it's the right guy. The car park is now transformed into a protected monument and is considered one of the most important historical sites in the history of the United Kingdom. The king's remains have of course been moved and reinterned in the cathedral, so if you want to visit the old king, that's where you're going to have to go. It's a much more fitting setting for a king of his stature, don't you think? Number 9. Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex Another science fiction set piece, this location is for all the lovers of George Orwell or even Thomas Pynchon. This complex, which actually looks more like a cross between the pyramids of Giza and what I'd imagine Area 51 to look like, is located in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Its name, the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex, is also pretty intense. Owned and operated by the United States government, this facility is capable of launching 100 missiles of two different types, as well as monitoring the entire world's airspace to detect if any missiles have been launched at the good old US of A. The general atmosphere of the location could be perfect for some kind of post-apocalyptic film, but it's instead business as usual for the United States government. These are rare images for the general public, but offer us a glimpse into the inner workings of something that's considered highly classified. But the operators of this complex did allow the photographer Benjamin Halpern to come around and document the location and its structures. It's very easy to see why. The buildings are impressive, not only operationally but also aesthetically speaking. So thank you United States government, I guess. Number 8. A Massive Mysterious Rock Sphere in Bosnia Oh look everyone, a big old rock, how cool said no one ever. I'm just kidding. Rocks do rock. Get it? I'm really funny, I hope. Really though, the rock is quite special. That's because of one really cool reason. It's believed to be the oldest stone sphere formed by human beings, and that's pretty cool. The mysterious stone would be found sticking partially out of the ground in a forest outside of a town in Bosnia. The archaeologist who found it's very controversial within the scientific community though, and his name is something that I can't pronounce. After finding only a portion of it sticking out, the scientist would enlist some other archaeologist friends to then dig up the rest. The authenticity of the stone would be in question, and that's because the scientist had made some incorrect claims in the past. While his claims about the rock itself are distinct and original, other scientists have found similarly human-formed rocks all the way across the world as far as Costa Rica. So maybe we should take his findings with a grain of salt. In any case, the size and perfect shape of the rock is very, very impressive. So thanks for the find. Number 7. Bombay Beach, California The beach can be a place on earth that anyone, and I mean anyone, can find some space within themselves to let go and just relax. That is, unless you go to Bombay Beach in California. This very, very not chill place is littered with fish bones and abandoned houses and has attracted tons of tourists who are looking for the macabre and post-apocalyptic in their world. 40 miles away from any kind of civilization, this portion of land was nothing but a desert in the early 1900s. But then somebody had the bright idea to divert some of the water from the Colorado River into this spot, and it was a smashing success, bringing in many families who were looking for their next cool vacation spot, but then became a quick victim of its own demise. That's because so many people had moved there that many different sorts of industries had also put their eye on some land and moved out there as well. After polluting the water source so much, the water then became poisonous, killing all of the wildlife around it. The results? A stinking lagoon littered with bodies and the stench of dead fish. So needless to say, people ran away pretty quickly, leveling the area to decay into what it is today a beach that's made up of fish bones and not sand. Number 6. The Sailing Stones of Death Valley 
More rocks, all right, okay. These rocks though are definitely much more interesting than the last one. These rocks literally defy the laws of science because they move on their own without any kind of gravitational help. But how, you may be asking yourself. Well, Death Valley is known as the hottest place on Earth and also sits at the driest and lowest elevation in North America. Deemed a national park in 1933, it's also home to these moving rocks known as the Sailing Stones. The stones themselves have a very different kind of attribute among them, meaning they're of different sizes and shapes. Another really strange thing about the rocks is that no one actually has seen them move in person. The only way they're able to know that they move for sure is the trails that they leave behind. And of course, they're in different positions when people come and go from the area. It really sounds kind of sketchy to me, maybe aliens, but they really do move. Have you ever visited these rocks and seen them? If so, let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Desert Graveyard for Sea Mammals Take a guess at where the richest site for fossilized marine mammals is in the world. In the ocean? No. How about the beaches? No. Well, where then? Probably the last place you would ever guess. In the Chilean desert. 40 miles above sea level. The name of this mound in the Atacama is Cerro Balena, which is Spanish for Whale Hill. Found in 2010 by a crew of construction workers looking to expand the Pan American Highway, scientists believe that there was an ancient bacteria that had killed off many whales at the same time and their bodies then washed up on the shores of what is now the Atacama Desert. There are four different perfectly preserved fossils there, spanning many different species of animals, many of which are believed to have existed between six and nine million years ago, according to science. A very curious thing about this mound, though, is that it has four different layers of fossils. It indicates that there was a repeated mass die-off of animals in the area. Number four, Little Alien. Now finally, something having to do with aliens, because I want to believe. Isn't this why we all hang out on YouTube anyway? Try to find some videos that help us believe and confirm aliens? Well, this location may have not been formed or brought to you by aliens, but it's definitely close to a locations where they may be residing. Little Alien, get it, <laughs> is, <clears throat> is located in the Nevada town of Rachel, and it's famously close to the town of, you guessed it, Area 51 in Roswell. The entire atmosphere and general decoration of this hotel perfectly reflects the eerie alien stylings of the town in general. Family owned and operated, the Little Alien has been doing really good business and is still trucking 25 years after its opening. So the next time you find yourself drawn to the outer rims of the infamous Area 51, it may be worth booking a room. And if I ever stay there, it's going to be an honor and a pleasure to look for aliens myself. Number three, giant fossilized armadillo. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen while you just popped out for a stroll? Was it a car crash? Maybe your neighbors dancing in their yard. Maybe a dog having a dump. Well, when Jose Antonio Nieves popped out for a little stroll one night in Argentina, he would see something that surprised him way more than any of these pretty normal things. That's because he stumbled upon a giant fossilized armadillo. He would discover the three-foot shell while walking along the riverbank near a local farm. Scientists believe that the shell actually belongs to a glyptodont, which is apparently an ancient relative of the armadillo. When he first saw the shell, Jose was convinced that he had found a dinosaur egg and was a smidge disappointed to discover what the reality actually was. But hey, I would be too, so I'm right there with you. The scientists who inspected the shell had found a hole on top and at first assumed it was so the head could peek out. Upon further inspection, they decided it was actually just due to wear and tear. But nevertheless, it does make for an awesome find just taking a stroll along the river. Number two, Havasu Falls. The number two entry on our list is one you've probably seen before, as it's people's default backgrounds or on their calendars and whatnot. The Havasu Falls are one of the most iconic natural occurrences in the United States, and is very frequently confused with Havasu Lake. 
The lake is beautiful as well, and the hike between the two is said to be actually grueling. Located on the Havasupai Indian Reservation just outside of the Grand Canyon National Park, the falls plunge more than 100 feet into a pool of crystal clear bluish-greenish water, but not in the dirty green bacteria way. In a nice way. This is actually where the falls get their name from. Havasupai means people of the blue-green waters. The pool of water gets its bluish tint from all of the magnesium inside. As the pool deepens, the calcium carbonate is released from it, and it creates a deeper blue tint, reacting with the magnesium to produce a greenish tint. I wonder if you could jump off them into the pool. I've always wanted to do that. Sounds so great for my vertigo, though. And now on to our final entry, and a name that I'll surely screw up. Number 1. The Buzludza Monument Located on the Buzludza Peak in the mountains of Bulgaria stands an enormous and circular monument to a special moment in history for the Soviets at the time. The peak would become the location as well for an epic battle between Bulgarians and Turks in 1868, and in 1891, Demetar Blagov led a group of socialist thinkers up there to discuss the future of Soviet rule. To commemorate what had transpired, the Soviet government then put into motion a construction of a monument fit for the powerful events. The Bulgarian army would begin construction in 1974, assisted by a number of different artisans and architects. After the fall of the Soviet Union in 1989, the building was then deserted and left to anyone who would happen to come upon it. There's still actually a way inside of the locked building, a side door on the right side that's unlocked. But shh, I'm not the one who told you. You never know who's listening. Seeing all of this stuff really makes me want to travel more. There's so many beautiful and crazy things in the world to experience and learn from. And once the whole pandemic's over, I've got my eye on South America. Which crazy thing on this list would you prefer to visit if you could only visit one of them? Let me know in the comments below and check out the other cool stuff that's coming on the screen right now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.